we had to develop games that would use that hardware up. And uh, many of the games that followed Circus were in an effort to use up the inventory. And when it was big enough, we actually buy more parts. So it turned out uh, a good and a bad thing. The 6502 board turned out to be a very prolific board for x -Men. Uh, it was the precursor to what we call the 440 board, which was the first gun game that came out. And Ken is going to talk a little bit about the gun game series and uh, I'll show you some pictures about that. Um, before we go on to that, though, does anybody have any questions about the old 6502 stuff? Well, I had a question that was when you were making your uh, uh, boards as fast as you could produce them, did you have an in house facility or were you shipping? Uh, no, we did everything. Yeah. We uh, we designed, uh, well, we didn't produce the, the board itself. We had that produced, but we would go the board, we would wave, we would put it through the wave uh, machine, the wave saw machine, we would debug it, and uh, we had the cabinets built, and you know, we did everything basically. So you had a big facility for building the cabinets, or was that? Yes, um, in the late 70s, we were making about 120 cabinets a day. 120 games a day were going on to containers. What was your staff like at that time? Uh, at that time, uh, this is before I got into programming, I was the operations manager of the company, and we were about 300 people strong at that time. Yeah, I personally had um, eight supervisors to help me coordinate the day. And um, so I handled most of the production side at that point. And uh, in the early 80s, I started programming. I, my first game was Mousetrap. Everybody oh, knows yeah. Mousetrap. Yeah. 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 A very successful game. My personal favorite, my all-time favorite, is Pepper 2. Yes. Um, Pepper 2, it really should have been called Zipper. Anybody that played it knows that's a Zipper game. I only <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to be called Zipper. About two weeks before we shipped it, um, this brand new lawn cutting machine, a lawn oh. cutter, called oh. Zipper, came out. <laughs> and he, our president, got a little fearful that there would be some issues with the name. So he said, I'm going to rename it. Uh, and in 25 minutes, he came up with Pepper 2. And we're all. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> it got named Pepper 2, it got shipped, and, then, and that's all she wrote. That was a very successful game. My personal favorite play game. Uh, playing game. Yeah. How about Fax, in particular the Elegante cabinet? So Fax was done in, uh, in parallel with, um, I think, the Vertigo game. Um, maybe you could out. Yeah, it was. It's on the same board. It's um, it was done as a cocktail table model and as a bar top model. I think we sold more bar tops than we did stand up stand up cabinets. Uh, there's some amusing things in that game. There's a lot of creativity in the in the text of, of X. Um, I found a score flyer. Score? Yeah. Oh. Score is a love machine. Oh my god. <laughs> How embarrassing. <laughs> yes. What was your first game that had a high score table? And what year was that? Oh my god, I really don't know. I'd have to really think about the games. And I'd have to get that as an issue. I don't know. Okay. Did you have a game called Venture? Yes, we did have a game called That Venture. was in the 78 ers Just or early 79. Yeah, I have, I have a 1981 for Venture. Uh, 81, yeah. Yeah, so I did Mousetrap 81 and uh, Pepper 2 82. Uh, Venture was done in parallel with Mousetrap by another team. And uh, Fax, I think, was done right around the same time. Uh, actually, no, Fax was in combination with uh, the Crossbow and Shine Man uh, development period. What about Teeter Torture? Oh, Teeter Torture. Teeter Torture is a, a one off. Yeah, it was done uh, fairly late in the, in the progression of the 6502 board. Uh, we had occasionally produced a game that we would put on location, and it didn't make enough money. And when that happened, we didn't produce it. Human uh, Torture is an example of that. Uh, there's a few others. Uh, we had a game that Vic did called The Turtles, and uh, 
it has the distinction of having made more money when it was broken and turned off than it did. <laughs> <laughs> That is honest to God, true story. Uh, I was managing the field testing at the time, and it went in the arcade. Nobody wanted to play it. It failed, and people put quarters, more quarters in it when it was a dead screen than when it was on. It was ten months of development down the drain. I'm not privy to any of that information. No, I, I don't know any of the details of that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, you guys put out Starfire, right? Um, Starfire was a licensed game. We licensed that from a programmer uh, named Ted Marchand and his group. It was uh, a very good piece of hardware, a very good piece of software. I was wondering if you guys heard anything from Lucasfilm. Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, uh, the other thing they did, which was absolutely wonderful, was Fire One, if you've seen that. It's a submarine game. Those two products were technically marvelous for the time when they came out. Um, we screwed up on the Fire One cabinet. Uh, we had rounded the front edge of the Fire One cabinet and had these great big handles. We didn't know that kid, kids would want to hang on the handles <laughs> and around the front corner and the handle would bring the cabinet down on top of the kid. <laughs> and so we had to rapidly modify the cabinets and modify the ones that were in the field to not prevent any more injuries. So that was a big mistake. But one thing about Fire One, it was a very complicated game. Um, one thing about games you guys probably all know is that when you're in the arcade, you basically have to get your excitement for each quarter. You're paying for a, I've heard it said, quarter worth of adrenaline. So it's a different mindset. You got to drop that quarter. You got to give them some value, right? And uh, a lot of that is maintaining a 60 hertz frame. That was a big deal back then. You tried to go 30 hertz in the arcade, you were laughed out of the room. You had to have very responsive controls that made sense. It was fun to play. You had to have a game that was fun to play. Um, the Thinking Man's game didn't make money.